This is the modulator from R.J. Martin. I wanted a knife from R.J. Martin for quite some time, mainly because he was one of the first of the sort of internet um, makers, active on the internet that I mean, who spoke genuinely from a point of view of science, of metallurgy, of practicality, which I have a lot of respect for. It's relatively common to find knife makers like that now. It might be hard to figure out which one is which. But back in the earlier days of the internets, not so common. Well, one of the reasons why I got this model is that it's in S110V. I have a blade in S125V from Mike. So it'll be interesting to compare those two steels. S110V is an interesting evolution of the 420V family of steels. Lots of information in the patents on those two steels, or families of steels rather. Again, that's in the description. But basically what they did is they replaced some of the vanadium with niobium and they increased the amount of cobalt that was in the steel. So replacing some of the vanadium with niobium increases the amount of free chromium that's in the steel because niobium has a higher affinity uh, towards carbon, uh, even more so than vanadium, over chromium. So it tends to grab up the carbon and stop the chromium from forming carbides. And chromium has a lower solubility in uh, niobium carbide than it does in vanadium carbide, which prevents it from sort of muscling in after the carbide's been formed. So it tends to promote the corrosion resistance of a steel. And as you increase the cobalt, it's an austenite stabilizer. So basically that keeps the ferrite out of the uh, final microstructure of the steel. And you don't want that because ferrite's relatively soft and weak compared to tempered martensite. So it will be kind of interesting to see, can I actually get a uh, difference between this and Mike's blade. And of course there's lots of differences and you wouldn't want to generalize steels just looking at two knives. But as a point of reference, it's kind of interesting. Um, a number of people have sort of hinted at that there's a bit of uh, hypocritical nature uh, in me being exhibited by getting this knife because of the fact that this knife has many elements that I've spoken about and been rather critical uh, before in the past. Metal handles, high carbide blade and a heavy use tactical knife, uh, integral locks. Many of the issues that I've spoken about uh, in regards to those aspects, I still have with this knife. Uh, it has um, a very well executed, what I would call first generation uh, integral lock. The next generation of locks would be the locks that feature things like the lock bar stabilizers, uh, the steel face inserts, uh, uh, hobax rolling detent, stuff like that. So it does have some of the issues of integral locks. If you give it a really, really tight grip, you can form the lock over, press it over, it'll jam, it can make it harder to release. Like all integral locks in very heavy use, you're going to force the blade tang against the lock face, which can include or cause sharing type failure or premature wear on the lock. And in general, I don't really consider this a very robust design because of the way the mating surfaces interact in heavy use and would much rather prefer for a heavier use knife something like this where you can see the pin on the axis lock actually separates the load and drives it into the frame of the knife rather than on the mating surfaces. In regards to the cutting performance of the knife, it's really high. Um, I compared it to a Mora number 1260 on some woodwork doing some light uh, cutting. It uh, fell in the same class as the Mora, which you would expect because the edge angles are actually relatively similar. But on deeper cutting, uh, the very strong relief provided by the deep, full height, hollow grind, uh, it dramatically outperforms the Mora. They're not in the same class. So pointing a stick may take four to five cuts with the Mora, and this does it in one, just slices right through it. In terms of utility work, I compared it to a 710 axis from Benchmade, uh, cutting up light cords, heavy cords, uh, cardboard, light plastics, thick plastics, foams, significantly better uh, than this, which again is regarded as being one of the better performers uh, for production knives. But for example, where the 710 would start to split foam and sp 
splay it out the edges, the modulator continued to make clean cuts. And just to quantify it a little bit, I sliced up some cubes and measured the force. And the modulator was taking 6 to 7 pounds, and the 710 axis was taking between 9 and 10. So the modulator uh, was almost 50% better in terms of how much force was being used. Significant uh, advantage. Uh, just doing a check on long-term cutting, um, I whittled some hardwood, some flooring, some basswood dowel, a bit of an old hickory handle, and then some you know, spruce pine and fir. And after about 500 cuts, the only real issue I had was that the clip down where my pinky finger makes contact in this area was a little bit abrasive. Uh, clips are really highly sensitive to hand shape. The new clips that Spydergo has in a tenacious line I find really comfortable. They just land in my hand exactly right. This one doesn't, uh, so it feels a bit, I wouldn't say sharp, but I can notice it a lot more than the Spydergo clips. But again, that's very hand sensitive. The shape and uh, size and nature of your hand is really going to influence that. Um, before I start to sound a bit too fanboyish, there are some issues about this. Um, that I don't particularly like. The jimping that's right here is very smooth. It's almost sort of non-functional. It indexes a little bit as in you sort of know where your thumb is, but it doesn't really provide any traction. Uh, what Benchmade has done with the 710 axis I think is a very nice improvement over the super mega tactical jimping of the ZT series which I talked about before which is that sharp that you can actually abrade your skin the 710 is nowhere near that but provides a much stronger uh, friction based you can see position than the very smooth jimping on the modulator so I can't ramp my thumb ahead on this I can easily on the modulator you can see how they've slightly dropped the blade on the 710 axis and sharpened all the way back to the front. The modulator, uh, basically because of the flipper, doesn't have a sharpening notch and about three-eighths of this edge is not sharpened. That is a couple of uh, problems. For me what tends to happen is over time that unsharpened area, unless you're rather uh, careful, tends to drift out into the blade. The other issue is when you're starting cuts, you don't want to hit this blunt area because it'll skip, so you tend to have to cut ahead on it. And what you end up doing is cutting further ahead than it's optimal because, of course, you don't know exactly, you know, eyeball where the sharpened edge is going to start, so you end up wasting even more of the blade. So I think I'm going to put probably a sharpening notch there and then bring all the way back to give me some kind of visual reference. I don't think I'll do anything with uh, the jimping. Maybe, maybe not. The inside of the handle scales, while I wouldn't call them sharp, could use a bit more work. Uh, the outer edges of the blade handle are very well contoured. The back spacer, excellent because it smooths out the pressure over this whole area. Really makes it much more comfortable. But you can feel the sort of inside of the handle scales and a bit more work there uh, would have been appreciated. So overall impressions are relatively positive, very high performance blade and it's easy to see how someone would pick up a knife like this and immediately see the jump from productions to uh, custom knives, although there's a bit of debate about what that label actually means. But in any case, you can take a production knife like the 710 Axis, which itself is regarded as a relatively high performance knife and if you compare that to the modulator it really isn't it's outclassed significantly that you would say it's a full class above the only sort of advantage that the 710 axis would have is that the inherent i wouldn't say strength of the lock because generally locks don't fail by being weak but the much greater stability of the 710 axis especially to uh, shocks Although I also prefer uh, G10 handles rather than full metal grips. But I'm very looking forward to using this knife in the future, carrying it, and giving a more well-rounded opinion after a couple of weeks or even a few months of carrying it.